Okay, so again, these red solutions correspond to the secant solutions. The greens, the green curves here correspond to the cosecant solutions. Um, uh, the, the sort of bottom or the um, the the place where these uh, um, where these solutions sort of hit uh, integ integral numbers of pi uh, is is increasing because they have we have a multipl multiplicative factor in front h bar squared k squared over two m, which uh, which I'm showing here by this blue dotted line. Okay, so that's in some sense that's kind of the envelope of these cosecant and secant solutions. Okay. Um, so now, in order to find uh, solutions, what we, so I'm placing these are basically the right hand side of these equations. The left hand side is just u sub u naught, and so the left hand side is actually just a um, it's just a horizontal line. And so basically, for any given value of u naught, you can write a solution. Uh, you can find the uh, how many bound states there are simply by drawing a horizontal line which corresponds to u naught. Okay, and so if I if I have uh, a, a u naught with this particular value of energy, and I haven't labeled this, okay, so we're again we're talking very qualitatively here. Um, then what we find is that we have one. So every time that we have an intersection, that corresponds to a bound state. We have one, two, three, four, five bound states in this case. And you can see that uh, each one of these bound states corresponds to a particular value of KL. And since K, okay, since KL is related to the energy in this way, then we can extract what the, um, we can extract what the energy is for that particular value of KL. Okay, so K and E are related, and that's what that means. And so uh, you can see that the uh, by looking at the spacing between successive ones here, the spacing between uh, this one and this one is bigger than between this one and this one, which is bigger than between this one and this one, and so on. And so what we find for the um, for the uh, uh, potential for this uh, uh, in, for this uh, finite potential well that the that the uh, the energy values are getting um, the spacing is getting closer and closer together. Okay, and um, and so the other thing that we notice is that we can draw a line as close to the bottom as we like. Okay, so I'm going to draw. I'm going to try to draw a a, a, a a line for you, not very close to the bottom here, very close to e equal zero. And what we find is that no matter how shallow our well, that is, no matter how small u not is, it's always going to intersect this first n equals one curve. And what that means is that even the shallowest potential well has at least one bound state. Okay, that might be surprising, but that's what these solutions tell us is that no matter how shallow we make the potential, that is, no matter how small we make u not, or how um, or how uh, narrow we make it, that is L is equal to, as L gets closer to zero, we always have one bound state, okay? Because there's always one intersection, at least one intersection um, of U naught with one of these solutions. And that simply be is because this solution, this secant squared solution is, uh, is uh, intersects the origin on this graph, okay? And so this, this, um, this uh, um, this solution, I mean, this um, uh, graphical method for, for looking at these solutions uh, allows us to get some important information and, and allows us to see how the physics works. And it also uh, allows us to, if we, if we actually plotted this on, on an absolute scale where we had energy values and, um, and we would actually be able to extract uh, the quantized energy values and the um, and the uh, uh, and the what you know which would allow us to basically set uh, to extract the values of the constants a b c and f and therefore allow us to write the x the uh, wave functions explicitly.